Alrighty, here we are. Haven't done a online uh, recording in a long time, so I think we've got ourselves all squared away. Hopefully you can see the screen just fine. Uh, welcome back to Big Board. I thought uh, this afternoon or this morning, is it this morning, this afternoon? Late morning, I take a quick look at uh, issue number 26 from War Diary. And uh, just been sent a, a complimentary copy, a uh, digital uh, copy, and I wanted to run through it. I had a look uh, over the last couple of days at some of the articles in it. I'm not going to go through every single article, but I will offer some uh, thoughts and comments on some of the articles. Uh, <clears throat> and we'll kind of you know run through things from there. You know, one, once again, I will say, first of all, just, you know, I just love the cover art for each particular issue that comes out there's a lot of thoughtfulness that uh, goes into these and also incredibly dramatic to look at those two uh, battleships there now someone's probably going to tell me they're not battleships but look at those two naval entities <laughs> okay all right so uh you know roy does a nice introduction here and tells you what's going on in the magazine this uh, this month or this quarter as the case may be and uh, caught my attention here was that there's uh, also out as our new game, uh, Corvette Command, uh, the battle for the Atlantic 41-42. There's a designer notes, I think, on page uh, 55. Now, I had not heard about this being printed or developed at all. As you probably know, I'm not super into the uh, solo gameplay, uh, solo-specific mechanics. This one actually looks particularly interesting, and I, I think I'm going to uh, see if I can't square away a copy of that once it uh, goes to print, as the case may be. Right, so there's that. Uh, some article, some uh, other bits and pieces in there, but then uh, uh, some ads, <laughs> as always needed, to uh, keep the, the lights on. So we'll have a look. We're just going to go through the articles, but you can see this gives you just a quick little look at what's in the uh, edition this time and we'll go have a, have a quick look at all these and i'm trying not to labor the point too much on this we'll just keep going but i will i will just give a quick plug for war diary 32 dollars for a print uh, edition and just 16 for the pdf i've been a subscriber for a long time i am actually due to uh, renew my pdf subscription so i I need to uh, uh, do that. But in recent months, in the last two editions at least, uh, I have received a complimentary uh, just because uh, I, I did these overviews and whatnot. Anyway, so you now know that this is uh, sponsored uh, or whatever free, free product was received. As the case may be. So the British War at C1914, 1962, uh, 1916. This is going to be a multi part series. Uh, Paul Combin, uh, a great artwork again in this, but then also. Some lovely writing uh, goes through and looks at what went on at the very opening stages of World War One with uh, the uh, Admiralty and Churchill uh, rapidly issuing commands and edicts to uh, engage, not engage, to follow, not follow uh, the Govan uh, battleship or uh, whatever they call cruiser, battle cruiser, and uh, you know. Don't shoot unless uh, uh, you know our, uh, our, our timelines have been met and all this sort of fun stuff. So what Paul does is then says, okay, well, that's all cool, but let's go have a look and see what happened or what could have happened in some games that deal with a particular topic. And so he goes through quite a lengthy, uh, I think this is uh, nigh on 13 or 14 pages, great art all, all through it, but uh, goes through what went on, what are the battleships, how will, uh, how will things work, how, uh, what are they physically capable of and not capable of, and then uh, talks about the individual combats that occurred in uh, a couple of different games. And we'll, we'll uh, just scroll through those. I'm not going to get into you know, whether or not he played them correctly or not. It looks like it all looks pretty decent to me. I, I'm not particularly familiar with the games. Only one of them uh, uh, rings a bell to me. But you've got pictures of the games and gameplay and then lovely uh, narrative affair, uh, narrative affair, narrative uh, on the uh, left-hand side, uh, where the shots are taking place and what happens and which games most accurately represent everything. So I thoroughly enjoyed this. It's a, a great read. I'm not a big naval 
war gamer in general uh, but uh, I certainly enjoyed these. So uh, lots of good historical detail and some great gameplay by the looks of it that uh, Paul experienced. So that was pretty nifty. Okay, so study three, uh, setting the scene, defense joints, uh, credit evaluation uh, via the Royal Navy using the quarter deck games. So uh, here we go, Avalanche Press, Great War at Sea. Uh, I have a friend in Austin who, well, I guess he's kind of a past friend. I don't really stay in touch. He collected all of these uh, Great War at Sea games and kept on bugging us to play them. And we never really got around to it because every time we, we booked a time to play, he canceled. Anyway, uh, minor point, side point. Here we go. So more, 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 more. Uh, and then uh, finally, uh, oh, another play here. Uh, but then uh, a extensive end notes. Which, you know, I was wondering, uh, particularly for space when it comes to the magazine, the printed edition, it might be nice for folks, for these articles that are so long, particularly with Paul's great writing here, to give him some more space to write more words is to uh, allow, you know, put these online somewhere and say, oh, uh, just, you know, go to the link and uh, read the end notes, uh, read the bibliography and good stuff like that. Okay, War in the East. So John Burt. Uh, looks at two games, uh, Traces of War and Battles in the East from Decision Games. I've played uh, Battles in the East uh, pretty extensively. Played, I think, three out of the four battles and at least one of them twice. I think he does an excellent job here of uh, providing a summary of how uh, Battles in the East plays out and also highlights things that are great about it and things that, that might uh, lead you to think that you uh, you probably are left a little bit wanting for, in terms of detail and, uh, and whatnot. But I, I think he uh, overall covers the, the nuance and the mechanics and the gameplay pretty darn accurately here. And then goes on in Traces of War, uh, looking at the first offensive in 43, that... Uh, uh, highlights some uh, oddities in the uh, naming conventions uh, for Traces of War. Clearly, uh, very uh, enlightened uh, commentary, I guess, uh, on the on the maps uh, using the Ukrainian names as opposed to the historical names. Uh, big kudos for the rule book. Uh, no questions asked. Questionable of uh, in this, if I was going to sum this uh, this review up without you uh, ever reading it, if you've not played a victory denied, a victory lost, a victory complete, any of those uh, from uh, that series of uh, former MMP games, you uh, you don't know anything about this system. But if you have played, you'll you'll be very comfortable with what's going on here. Uh, and as with most of the those games. They're all chip pull. There's always a little hook uh, in the game to uh, that sort of ties everything around, not an axle, but ties everything around a, a specific metric that needs to be met inside the game, right? And in this particular instance, it's crossing points at rivers that need to be controlled or managed that will start to uh, influence the amount of reinforcements the Germans get will uh, change the way in which uh, Hitler approaches things uh, because there's some Hitler mandates in the, in the rules that are tied to uh, the crossing points. And then it also impacts the Soviets as well. So uh, I think John does a really nice job of crystallizing what all that is, what it means and how it works. Uh, and then, you know, strikes upon the fact that, hey, uh, now what I took away here was that the victory conditions probably need some tuning or more uh, detailed thought because they are not broken, but uh, don't really, uh, he, and he ends up with, your, as always, your, your mileage may vary, right? Uh, but but uh, they are not uh, crisp enough or, or, or detailed enough, I think, to give a, a balanced gameplay here. But that's compounded by chip pull because, you know, if... Uh, for instance, in one of the one of the plays they had, all of the Germans' chits come out first, and then the Soviets get to go. That, that does give them that opportunity to uh, create a breakthrough or a problem. And this is all really uh, uh, built around uh, the 
retreat to the Nepa River and how is that managed and when is it managed and how, how can you either break the game from that perspective uh, or, or not, as the case may be, uh, and get you know significantly a, a historical results. But I think John covers uh, in a very uh, diplomatic and polite way what's good and what's bad about the game, and uh, they enjoyed it, uh, obviously, here. Uh, lots of decision-making to be allowed, but uh, clearly a very basic uh, move combat system. Uh, yeah, so in here it says, yeah, we found the combat move, move combat decision, uh, fairly routine. Uh, and then uh, kind of off you go from there. All right, so another ad. This is second, this is part two of, uh, the, uh, is it Smithers? I think it is. Where is, where is his name? Why is his name not here? Well, it must be at the end. All right. Well, as I said, part two, if you're into Bitter Woods, another great article uh, going deep on, yeah, here it is, Hugh Smith is, uh, another article going deep on how to play and how to how to get the most out of your side in, uh, in the game. Some examples and illustrations of the gameplay and very comprehensive, long article, really digs in deep here. So uh, certainly enjoyed this. I had, because I've played Bitter Woods just once or twice, but really we're just kind of, eh, okay, it's a, it's a bulge game. But this, uh, this kind of, kind of gets me, uh, gets my juices flowing to want to perhaps revisit Bitter Woods, which would mean repurchasing it. Uh, because I'm certainly not going to try playing uh, Time for Trumpets just now. All right, so here's his article, very nicely done. Uh, in this guy just in every single magazine all right uh ads ads oh so <laughs> so conzi's house rules so if you don't know claire claire is uh ex-military uh officer level chap i apologize claire for not knowing what your rank is or was uh takes games and thinks about them purely from a uh a uh what is the right word? A military perspective and a, uh, 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 a doctrine-based perspective on what he believes how how the game should function. And sometimes he changes the game just a little bit. Sometimes he just creates play aids. Sometimes he changes the game massively, and it actually becomes a different game. Uh, but uh, Claire has his own unique approach, and in this particular instance, I believe that he is clean. What I would say is he is cleaning up. Uh, the Banish All Their Fears module uh, for the Bayonet and Musket series, the first volume. And, you know, as to be expected with the first volumes, and they're always a little bit rough around the edges, and this is probably no exception. So he's uh, done quite a fair bit of uh, updating there, and you will probably want to have a look at that if you are into that system and uh, finding it uh, to be uh, problematic. Now, what is this ad? Historic Wings, a new generation of Jeep. Oh, Wargame books in boxed form. Well, oh, okay. So uh, this must be what some of those solitaire style games. Perhaps, I don't know. Never seen these before. No idea what they're about. Solitaire air war game. Do I get to, do I get to fly a Spitfire or a Hurricane? That'd be cool. Hmm. Interesting. Never seen them. Who does? Who makes these? Well, I guess we'll dig into that and I'll uh, update you guys later. Oh, and I really enjoyed Ray's article here on A Glorious Chance. So, uh, you know, Gina had done just, I watched the development of this from afar. Massive lot of uh, work and research and thought and playtesting and patience <laughs> waiting to get this game published. Uh, so congratulations to... Uh, Gina for uh, getting this done and the review is glowing uh, and uh, extremely positive. Not a big 1812 war game guy. I haven't really dug into it terribly much, but this looks like it's an absolute winner. Uh, so uh, if you're into it, into 1812, you probably should take a look. Now here, once again, uh, Another game that I had heard nothing about, don't know anything about it, uh, not even sure that I want to know anything about it, but uh, Captain William Fetterman looks like he uh, rode himself into trouble. Uh, but there we go. Don't know anything.
anything about that game. Those counters look a little questionable. Hmm, interesting stuff. 50 bucks. All right. Well, maybe they'll have a sale. Callback Command Designer Notes. I had a quick read of these designer notes. I, I It just it got me, uh, by Alan Eagle here, got me uh, pretty excited about wanting to try this game out. I would thoroughly, here's a picture. Let me see if I can zoom in on that for you. It's kind of a picture of the components here. Hopefully this resolution works out. I'm, uh, I'm restricted with the resolution I can use when I'm recording because of the, I'm too cheap to pay for the software. Looks pretty and looks interesting. So uh, based on what I've read. So I think that could be a potential purchase for me in the future. We will see. Uh, blah, blah, TSW, whatever. Uh, so David Kennedy uh, does uh, was one of the designers or developers for Ottoman Sunset. And he just looks at, in detail uh, at uh, restructuring and reorganizing the decks so that you get a richer, deeper game. Uh, I thought there was already an article about this somewhere else. I'm not sure if this is a repeat or if it's original or if it's part two. So uh, I just, I, I recall seeing something like that. Now let's uh, zoom out a little bit because we're in pretty close. Pass and review, sort of capsule uh, commentary, uh, both books and war games here. So there's some nice reviews in here. Uh, and also games that I have not heard. Is, is that a game or a German? Looks like a game to me, but maybe it's not. I don't know. I have not read these. I I, uh, I skimmed through all this stuff. Well, here's a card game, The Longest Trench. Okay, so there's that. And a book, Breakdown, Crisis of Shell Shock. I don't know if I want to read uh, a couple hundred pages on uh, the psychological uh, impact and PTSD on the poor bastards that were in those. Uh, in those trenches all right so uh, and then another game i have no idea what the hell this is and i want to know i need to know more about this so roy if you actually end up watching the whole video can you send me some information on this game please i would be very curious u.s army and therefore japan to the end of the earth i have heard good things about this book previously and i will be very interested to potentially actually pick that up so we'll see so there we go folks Lock and Load's got an ad in there. Legion War Games has got an ad for Invasion Malta. Obviously, uh, a long-awaited, uh, nearly a decade or more in the making. Vance von Boris has released his uh, title. Good for him. Jolly good. So there you have it. Just a quick... How do I do this? Oh, he said. No idea. There we go. Man, my camera looks like it might be dirty. How about that? All right. Uh, so look, thanks for tuning in. I, I'm, I'm going to uh, keep this focused and not make it any longer than it already is. But I will be checking in later today, potentially, or over the weekend. And uh, we'll have a little chat, a little uh, little fireside chat, maybe have a cocktail together. So if you're into that, uh, either Friday night or uh, Saturday maybe Saturday morning, so no cocktails then, maybe coffee. So fireside chat with the coffee on Saturday morning or cocktails on Friday night. Let's see, we'll have a conversation about a broad range of topics, some of which are uh, near and dear to your heart, others which you'll just be like, shut the hell up, yeah. All right, talk to you soon, all the best. Have a great week and weekend. It's Thursday, roll some dice, later.